Diderot was a philosopher of the French Enlightenment born in 1713 in France. Um, in his early adolescence, he would have a largely ecclesiastical education guided by his father. Um, and he would almost reach the point of ordainment in the French countryside. But he decided he wanted more of his education. So he decided to enroll in Sorbonne in Paris. Um, there he would study natural philosophy and theology, and he would reach the point of gaining something that we would understand today as a kind of master's degree. But like his ordainment, um, he would not pursue a career in academics. Um, he would not become a professor. He would instead live a bohemian life. Um, he lived for 12 years, um, only making money off of his translation works, his critical works, his reviews, his creative writings, and some column writings. As you can imagine, this was an incredibly bleak life. Um, he lived in complete financial destitution for about a decade. Um, however, about in the 1740s, there would be a breakthrough with Diderot. He would publish two novels and his first full philosophical work called Philosophical Thoughts. Um, these were important works to Diderot because it gained attention in the French intellectual sphere um, and gained him new opportunities like that of the Encyclopedia, which he would work on for about 14 years on and off. Um, during his work on the Encyclopedia, he would come to understand his ideas fully. Um, he was a materialist, um, and he believed in dialectical reasoning and um, did not agree with the idea of any sort of absolute truth. Um, now this idea got him into a lot of trouble throughout his years. Um, it resulted in the encyclopedia being censored once it was published. It um, resulted in the surveillance of Diderot, the imprisonment of him for three times, and the seizing of his manuscripts. Um, all of this kind of boiled down to um, an anger with his ideas that essential, essentially that truth was not absolute and all truth was of relative validity based on dialectical reasoning. He believed that any sort of absolutism and any sort of rigidity to our truth is an imagined thing with us. But why were they so angry at him because of this? Essentially because this is a kind of atheism. Um, this is a kind of idea that um, we come to tr truth through reason um, rather than any sort of blind faith or any sort of attributing of truth to God. Um, he even went as far to say that the idea that God is an attributor for truth is a kind of intellectual vanity. He believed that nature was interconnected and he believed that um, nature was whole, but the idea that we could attribute it to a single creation was kind of fast and loose, um, and it was sweeping under the rug all of the things that we can't know. Um, he believed that instead we can understand certain parts of nature and we can understand certain parts about the world through dialectical reasoning, but we can't understand nature as a whole and we can't attribute its creation to something as big as God. Um, this resulted in a lot of trouble for Diderot. Um, this resulted in him never getting a break throughout his career. Um, and it resulted in the encyclopedia being a very censored document at its, at its time of publishing. 
Um, so what did he do to change this? What did he do to get his ideas out there? Um, he believed in the power of art, essentially. Um, he published two novels, um, one Rameau's Nephew and one is The Nun, and he believed that his ability to interpret philosophical thought through a narrative form allowed him the ability to have a more freer voice in his works. Um, and this reflects his aesthetic views, which I'm most interested about, which is essentially the idea that art is veiled philosophical thought. Um, through our observations, through the transition and vocalization of our pre-conscious thought, and through hard work, we come to render certain things about the world which we can present to other people and other people can read and render for themselves, allowing our community and allowing our larger society a larger dialectical understanding of the world and allowing allowing us a better understanding of how we live our lives. Um, so I believe that Diderot kind of has this unique distinction because he's not only a philosopher, he also has a very broad band of creative work. Um, this allowed him to reach a larger audience. This allowed him to be an influence not only on philosophical thought, but also on aesthetic thought and also on the literary canon. Um, and this allowed him to express his ideas in a larger bandwidth than we see with a lot of the philosophers we have read, especially in the French Enlightenment. Thank you.